I used to be one of the people who believed that Ultra Instinct was done better in the anime rather than the manga, because in the anime Ultra Instinct has better animation or illustration, and the anime seems to do more with the fight between Goku and Jiren than in the manga, but as I delve deeper into the hidden meanings and the symbolism behind Toyotaro's vision of Ultra Instinct, I'm starting to realize that the impact of Ultra Instinct is actually far better in the manga, when you're able to look beyond the fancy animation and the prolonged fight sequences and truly look at what's being explained. Ever since the Demon King Piccolo arc, Goku's previous teachers have all taught Goku a relatively similar lesson to Whis, and that lesson being that having control over your movements is far better than wielding pure and raw strength. You could even say the same philosophy is carried with Goku in Dragon Ball Z when he chooses to master Super Saiyan instead of using the bulky and muscular Super Saiyan grade 2 or 3. In the Dragon Ball Super manga, the Tournament of Power's main purpose serves as a way to bridge Goku's lifelong progression as a martial artist, an all-encompassing way to end Goku's journey, binding the knowledge that he had learned from each of his different teachers into one form, with that form being none other than Ultra instinct. This is foreshadowed a few different times within this arc, with the first being when Beerus fights the 11 Gods of Destruction in the exhibition match before the real tournament. Now, I have an entire video recapping that battle between the gods if you're interested in watching, but a lot of people believe that Beerus dodging the other 11 Gods of Destruction, although be it for a brief period of time, was just to merely show how Beerus was far stronger than everybody else with no greater meaning. And this is actually incorrect. As it pertains to the arc, remember, the entire theme and climax of the Tournament of Power is Goku finally realizing his teachings and honing the skills of Ultra Instinct, and it's actually very important that Goku is able to be there to witness Beerus challenging the other gods, because although the gods of destruction are all relative in power, which we see through the damage sustained by each of the gods at the end of their battle, because Beerus is able to focus his power and control his abilities on a level beyond the other gods, he's able to do a far better job at dodging each of the destroyers, momentarily gaining the upper hand. The next time we see this theme fully displayed in the Tournament of Power arc is when Master Roshi applies this same philosophy to his battle with Jiren. People seem to be under the impression that Master Roshi had unlocked Ultra Instinct, as well as Beerus by the way Master Roshi was able to dodge Jiren's attacks. But that's a very surface level way of seeing these events. Jiren is a fighter who is introduced as a warrior who is extremely good at controlling his ki. This is something that Vegeta confirms later that Whis even acknowledges to be correct in the superhero's arc. When Jiren fights his opponents, he draws on only the amount of energy necessary to actually defeat them, which allows his attacks to be far more potent and far more deadly. But raw strength isn't everything, as Jiren suppresses his power Powers to a level that would be just slightly over Master Roshi's, Master Roshi is able to effortlessly dodge Jiren. Because while Master Roshi might not actually be stronger than Jiren, when fighting at the same level of power, Master Roshi is a far more skilled martial artist, and he can control his movements better than even Jiren can. This display is exactly what allows Goku to understand the pieces that he's missing to unlock Ultra Instinct, allowing him to finally activate the technique technique for the very first time. Toyotaru is able to combine the lessons of Goku's journey through all of his teachers in a meaningful way because looking back, every teacher has taught Goku that there are many things that lie beyond having raw power. Even Jiren himself tells Goku that raw power means nothing if it can't be utilized properly, in response to Goku attempting to raise his ki to gain an upper hand. Ultra Instinct makes sense in the manga because it's activated the moment that Goku finally adapts to teach of all of his previous masters, kind of like Aang when he enters the airbender state in the last avatar. In the anime, however, the explanation of Ultra Instinct is a lot more bland, with Goku unlocking the form through overcoming a spirit bomb. And to be totally honest, in the anime, Ultra Instinct is kind of used like just another form of Super Saiyan that makes Goku faster. And this probably explains the reason why Akira Toriyama hadn't thought about having the gods of destruction 
destruction fight in the anime, or Master Roshi displaying Ultra Instinct-like movements the way they did in the manga. Because in the manga, these moments actually serve a massive purpose in progressing the story and developing Goku's character, which just wasn't present in the anime. Whereas in the manga, it's more true to Goku having more control over his movements, his power, and his emotions. Now, personally, I still do prefer the anime versions of Ultra Instinct, as it's just way cooler and has some of the best animation in Dragon Ball history. But as a deeper story that can breathe theories and open up doors to more lore that can expand the Dragon Ball universe, the manga actually does this way better if you're able to look at the bigger picture. Now, if you made it this far into the video, then I really can't express how much I appreciate you for watching. And if you enjoy videos like these ones and want to see more, be sure to leave a like and comment down below what your thoughts on Ultra Instinct and the way it's portrayed in the anime versus the manga are in the comments section. When season 2 of Dragon Ball Super releases, if it ever does, I'll probably update this video to compare the anime versions of Ultra Instinct Goku and the Moro and Granola arc to their manga counterparts. So if you don't want to miss that, then be sure to subscribe and as always, I'll see you all in the next one.